Hey YouTube, how's it going? I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be talking to you about my portable solar generator that I built here in the rigid case from Home Depot. This is the 600 watt pure sine wave inverter. It's got a 20 amp hour Life PO4 or lithium iron phosphate battery in it. Uh, with this unit, we are able to run AC power like a fan, a refrigerator, small refrigerator, any 120 volt electronics or appliances. Um, right over here, we have a battery input where we can put an external battery pack into this unit. Over here on the this one right here, we can put, uh, this is where we would put our solar panels into this unit. Uh, this solar panel will take up to 400 watts of solar right off the bat with the solar controller that's in here. Charge the battery in probably an hour or two. I haven't fully tested it. I've just finished, the, for the most part, the prototype, and I just kind of wanted to show it to you, show it to you working. Uh, you guys have kind of seen the case and what we've got going with it. Uh, this is the back side. Like I said, here's where we have the... Uh, the main power in, where you just your AC power in when you when, you know if you want to charge the battery up from your house and just plug it right in. Uh, I haven't got it set up yet to go to your RV. It's another adapter I've got to put on, and I've also haven't got it set up for uh, grid power to where you can be tied into the grid and uh, wired into your um, solar at the exact same time for charging. But I'll have that done with another I don't know a couple more hours. That'll all be done, so that you can be running it into your grid and then using this as like a backup power so as soon as your power shuts off or the grid power goes down this will automatically kick on and start running off battery power so if you wanted to run your lights or a few TVs in your house you could do that um, on the side here let me unplug this fan for now on the side here and I don't know if you can see it right here there's a little button and that is our on our power on so we'll just turn that on now and of course this is the lid so I'll kind of give you an idea of where I put that power button. It's in the main part of the case. We turn this around and up at the front, we've got the original adapters that you guys have seen before, which here we've got our uh, USB. And right in the middle, you've got the voltmeter. And I've got that set at about 12 and a half, 12.6 volts right now, because under load, it comes down a little bit. And then um, over here, we are looking at the on off switch for this system for the front system now everything is controlled through the main power over here on the side that i just turned on so if i turn this off you hear a beep and then everything shuts down and that's just the way that i ran it for myself that way nothing gets left on hopefully and drains any power down but once again let me turn this back on on the side and then we've got power up here now, I want you to understand there's, there's more than 12 volts coming into this unit. We are running a 12 volt inverter, but I am running a 16 volt battery. And here you can see our meter that we've got in here. And here's the solar controller. Solar controller is not hooked up and running currently. Um, I don't even have it running to the battery because this is where the external battery will come in. I have to jump off of here, run this into another couple of electronic components. So that when the batteries are charging via the solar and charging via the uh, shore power or grid power, there won't be any complications and, and any interference and no, uh, we won't be feeding power back to the grid by any means. Here's the battery here. However, I can plug it in and power it with AC currently. That's not ready to charge it with solar yet because I got a couple more wiring connections to make. But I just wanted to get this part of it shown to you guys to kind of give you an idea of how it's set up and how far I've progressed with this. I will say this has been a nightmare in this small box. And it's not that it was a small box that created the nightmare. It's more of the style of this box. This box is extremely rigid. And if you look at it everywhere, there are folds and pleats and creases to make this box stronger. And therefore it was extremely hard to work around all these nuisances uh, of this box and get the pieces put where I wanted them and balanced and you know as soon as I thought I could put a piece you know over here then there was a, there was something in the way up in the front or the handle was in the way as soon as I started drilling things into the back here you know there was in the back there was a piece of uh, a rigid support or a brace or a strut of some sort or a gusset um, so it's been really interesting getting this done 
I did use the full uh, AIM 600 watt inverter in here. It was just easier to mount it that way. Now I'm only using one camera today, so I'm gonna just kind of flip this up a little bit so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like inside here. Now, the battery's not permanently mounted, but it is in here solid, and I'll put uh, some stuff to hold it into place. This is the AC charger for the battery. Um, it's just Velcroed onto the side of this. Um, the hollow sensor screwed down. Uh, the switch here, the main switch is screwed down. Everything's fused. I got a fuse panel here. I have a um, buck converter here to bring my voltage from 16 volts down to the 12 volts to this point. And then we're running the uh, 16 volts or a little less than 16 volts over here to the inverter to fire the inverter up. But that's pretty much in a nutshell. Anyways, let's start, let's run this thing. So here we got a little fan. As you can see, here's my cable. And um, I'll plug it in back here. One of the outlets, as you can see right here, I just plugged it in. Um, powered up, little fan right here. Let's turn it on. See the blades start to spin. That's high. You can hear it. I'm plugging the iPhone up here into the front. I've just powered up the iPhone. Since we're charging, do that again. There we go. So we're charging that. Running things simultaneously. Right now, the unit is saying we are consuming 4.5 amps of power. It says I'm running 56.84 watts since I've turned this on. And I've so far used 1.82, 83, 85 watt hours. And this thing has ran for a total of six minutes on this meter that's inside the box. Matter of fact, rather than just sitting here telling you this, I'll turn this around. Everything's backwards in the monitor. Um, here's the buttons to control this thing here. And then you can see what I was talking about. So anyways, it shows the voltage, then it shows your amperage. And if I turn the fan down, you can see the amperage adjust. If I unplug the iPhone, amperage adjusts again. And it's really funny because I'm running the 2.1 amp plug, but for some reason, when I plug in the phone, according to this meter, I'm not pulling 2.1 amps there. The phone just got plugged in and it just goes back up to three amps. I can turn the fan down to low. And now we're running 2.1 amps. As you can see right here, turn the fan up. Bring in a little more amperage. And then over here on the rest of the meter, it's going to show us our watt hours that we're running, um, how, many, how long this unit itself has ran, how many watts we're using right over here, and uh, how many watts we're consuming. And then it says we're 100% full on the battery, but it's not. And this unit has to be completely programmed. And so I'll get that going and programmed. By the way, I'm going to be doing a full series video or a full series of videos on this unit and how it was installed because I've seen a lot of guys put these together and I watched some of their videos and some of the guys are using some of these, you know, safety uh, components. You know, for instance, there's a, a BMS in the battery and then we have a buck converter and then we have a, a, uh, a fuse bus and then we have a negative bus over here. We have the hull sensor with the voltmeter. Uh, this is a really intelligent little piece. We have our AC outlets, things like this. We have relays. But nobody's really giving you, they're showing you how to make it or they're showing you how they made it kind of quick high speed and kind of the parts and they give you a list of parts, but nobody's actually showing you how to make it or what the parts do or, you know, how they work in conjunction with each other or how you have to wire them up and so on and so forth. So I'm going to give you guys a complete tutorial on how to actually build this. But right now I just wanted to show this to you, show you that it is underway, that it is working. Um, a couple more hours will be completely finished. And on the brighter note, um, I do have boxes being made, uh, my own custom boxes for these inverters, so there'll be no more of this kind of crazy stuff trying to retrofit it, and I'm having some boards made. So all I have to do is put the boards in, wire the boards up, and they'll be good to go. Nice carrying handle. They'll look nice in your house, in your car, whatever. They'll be sturdy, dependable, all that good stuff. But like I said, I just want to show you guys that I am working on this. It is getting completed. This was a mother, like I said, because of this box. This box was completely a real nightmare to work around. All of these different, you know, clearances, you think you've got it made and then you don't. Um, 
all these little ridges here and here screw you up. I don't know if you can see these where I'm pointing, but right in here. And then over here, there's these big ridges. Every time you want to drill a hole, there's a problem. Every time you want to put a hole in somewhere, you know, on the side of this unit, like so, there's these big, there's these big, uh, you know, support joints. So it makes it really hard to do anything. But nonetheless, it's getting there, it's getting done. You know, like a lot of you guys out there, you know, you get something in your mind and you know what you want to do and you know what that outcome needs to be, but then you've got to put it all together and make it all work. So luckily I happen to know a little bit about a lot of the stuff that's in here and that's enough to be dangerous and enough to get me by. And getting it all to work in conjunction with each other with my first time around it's been a little tricky like i said i have been wanting to do this for a lot of years and i i played with this stuff years ago so i kind of knew what i could get away with and you know what parts were out there what these will be doing will be a whole solution you're going to have a whole grid tie solution um that will have a transfer switch in it that once your power goes down if you have this hooked up and you had this wired to a, a separate panel in your house once power goes down this thing would automatically kick on say your refrigerator uh, a couple of lights maybe a television maybe all of your lights if you're running led in the house and at 20 amp hours it's not going to run a whole long time if unless you're just running a few little lights on a small tv you'll get by for a while um but in this case uh the way this is set up i i can get 100 amp hours into this case with these components this unit will also pose, this is the exact same size unit will also pose as the external battery that will plug in to the blue jack that I showed you back here um, and allow another 400, 400 amp hours what I, what I, I figured with, the, um, with another configuration without any of the other components in the box. And then we just run these here on the, the blue jack right here and you come out of this and into your other unit and you would have two battery packs running one solar generator and or you can get two of these solar generators like we said and you can connect them together as well and then you can work with more wattage a little bit less battery power but anyways guys it's been a while since i got a video i've been super busy as i always like to say i did want to show you this i've been working on this um many many hours and i know that might sound crazy but to get it right to get it safe to get it the way it should be to run um, to where you can plug this in, go to sleep, and not think about it. That takes a little more effort than some of these other units that you're seeing out there on the market, some of these uh, lithium units that are blowing up. And uh, I just want to make sure that mine doesn't do that to anybody or anything. And uh, so that being said, I, I also want to reiterate on the giveaway. we got a 500 subscriber giveaway coming up. And I have the brand new RAV Power power supply here in the box this is the brand new one that I will be giving away and this is the one like I said before that I'm keeping for me so this is mine that I've showed you guys a few different times this is your guys if somebody's gonna get this remember if you want to win that you gotta subscribe to my channel you gotta like at least one of my videos you've got to go to my website westthattechguy.com go to the bottom of the front uh, the home page sign up for my newsletter Tell me that you want to uh, enroll to win this unit right here. Uh, give me the information that I need on the website. And then when we get to the 500 subscribers, we'll be giving this away. A lot of you guys have been already signing up, and thank you very much for that. Uh, those of you who have sent me emails and had questions, I haven't had a moment to get to those, but I do see them, and I will get to them and respond to them. As usual, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you haven't liked a video, please do that. And if you don't like a video, that's okay. I don't mind. It's all good. Uh, just remember, in order to win, you've got to like a video, you've got to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next go-around. Thanks a lot for hanging out. I hope everybody had a new year. See you in the next video.